Hello, my name is Ava Unit 4 i Welcome to this Let's Build of LEGO set number 75019, the ATTE. This is actually the third version of the ATTE that LEGO produced in, in a large scale like this. The first one obviously coming out when Star Wars Episode II Attack of the Clones came out, and there was a second version that came out when Star Wars The Clone Wars television series was on the air. This is the version that was released in the final year of the Clone Wars TV series. It is is based both off of what you saw in Attack of the Clones and also what you saw in the TV series. This is another one of those Lego sets that have been sitting there for a little over a year, I think, and like I missed it the first time around because I was a little disappointed with how posable it was, and the, the clone troopers seemed a little too generic, and just in terms of decoration. There, there, there were a number of reasons I didn't get it the first time around. I think availability of money at the time might have been an issue, but, you know, that was my thing. The second one... Well... The second one, kind of the issue was there weren't enough clone troopers, and they had weird colors on them, and considering I... To this date, still haven't seen any of the Clone Wars television series. Um, it, it it's difficult for me to justify getting uh, the, the version that was in the in the that was featured in the TV series so to see how accurate it was, or if it changed between st uh, movies two and movie three. Now, I, I don't know the differences there. I don't know the ATTE that well, but. Uh, I bought this around the time that we learned, we, the audience, learned that Clone Wars was going to be coming to an end and that uh, Lucasfilm was moving on to a new television project. So the way I see it at the time, and even right now, this is probably going to be the last version that LEGO ever makes, unless there's, like, unless they call it back by popular demand and bring, you know, a brand new version of it or a reissue of some kind, this is probably going to be the last version of the ATTE in minifig scale that we'll ever get. Also, the reason I kicked it off um, earlier today is because, well, I've got some other kits that I want to get to, which come after this chronologically, and I was like, yeah, I gotta make room, and yeah, I shouldn't really let it sit there forever, so you know, might, might, as, might as well do it. It's like, you wanted it, Ava, come on, just, just you know, build the damn thing, what's wrong with you? I'll say it now, uh, one of the things that concerned me about and, and this doesn't just apply to the ATTE here, but it also applies to something like the ATST or the ATAT, -AT, you know, from episodes five and six, respectively. Um, the the posability in Lego minifig scaled sets, in terms of the le the the walkers, the Star Wars walking, you know, vehicles, always concerned me a bit. Now the ATAT -AT has four legs, and and you know, it's required to have. Um, posability at the hips, the knees, and the ankles, and that's all well and good, but you don't have to worry about splaying the legs out to the side or having them curve inwards, so you don't really have to worry about that. But for something like the ATST, or in this case the ATTE, um, they each have like an extra set of, it's, it's a chicken walker kind of leg, where the legs articulate backwards. In the case of the ATTE, not only do you have chicken walker legs on the front, but you've also got them on the back, and you've got, I also have a third set of legs in the middle. So, one of the things that bothered me, and it's just because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of picky about this when it comes to screen accuracy in, in the toys that I collect, that, that the middle leg didn't have an extra hip joint, I'm going to spoil it right now, didn't really surprise me, but what in what concerned me about all three AT, AT, I'm sorry, ATTE releases, all terrain tactical enforcers, what this is. What concerns me about all three releases is that an extra leg segment on the front and back legs has been removed. So really you don't, you don't have a leg, you have more like a glorified um, display stand 
of four limbs, you know, two on the front, two on the back, and then the middle leg articulates a bit too, a bit. So, um, and like I said, I'm spoiling it here. This is also an issue that came up, as I found out later on, this is an issue that came up in this set that I'm building right here. Uh, the leg articulation in the front and in the back is not good, is not screen accurate. Most of the other details seem to fit, I'll say, reasonably well. But leg artic articulation, and it, I mean, you've got friction joints, or no, you've got non-friction joints on this on this kit, but you don't have friction joints and you don't have ratcheting joints. So that's a bit disappointing with me, because they could do it with the AT, AT, which is, you know, huge camel-shaped thing, and it stands, you know, twice as tall as this does at minifig scale. That thing is articulated in three different places on e each leg, and it has a ratcheting joint on two of, of, of each leg, two ratcheting joints on each leg. This one has no ratchets on it. This one has no friction on it. And that was also the case. That was the thing that kind of made me shrug off the preview two, previous two releases of the ATTE is that the legs didn't articulate properly. You can move them, but... It's like, how articulate can you make a turtle? You know, it's kind of got... It's got a shoulder joint and a hip joint, and that's kind of it. You know, you, there isn't really an elbow. There isn't really a knee. So, in this case, kind of the turtle approach to designing the Lego version of the ATTE... I can understand why they did it, but that doesn't mean I'm allowed to like what they did. I was really surprised how intricate the, the hip design was, the internal structure of the hips for the, uh, the middle legs. I think this Lego set is more meant to mirror how the ATTE appears in in Star War, in Movie Two, uh, Attack of the Clones, because it's got Mace Windu, it's got a, a commander version of the uh, of a, a, a droid. What are those things called? Um, a battle droid. I'm sorry, I blanked for a moment there. But then it's got the dinosaur dude who got taken, the dinosaur Jedi dude who got taken out by Jango Fett. In in the movie. Like you see him hop up, he tries to kill. He tries to kill Dooku, and then Jango Fett takes him out with a couple shots. Must not have been a very good Jedi, or he was a novice, or you know, we, he might have a name. I don't care. He's a red shirt. Although at that point, Jango Fett's uh, credibility had already been established in the movie, so why he was there, I mean, I, 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 I don't know. But um, yeah, I, I'm pretty certain this version. This version of the set was meant to imitate the the little bit that we saw of the ATTE in uh, in uh, Attack of the Clones. Mace Windu was never in the ATTE. This other Jedi was never in it. There's only uh, there's one clone. There's one clone pilot, two droids, two battle droids, and two Jedi. I think that kind of the proportions of what kinds of characters appear in here is. Um, a little disturbing. I don't. I. I think. I think they could have. Uh, I'll say now, and I'm probably going to say it later on that the the proportion of like Jedi to clone troopers was off. I think there should have been like. I, I know there's like one trooper sits up in the turret up on the top, which I'll be building later on. Uh, there's one inside the cockpit, obviously, and then I'd like you know a couple that sit on the inside. But you've got two Jedi in here, which I don't. I don't quite understand. Ah, this camera angle. Ugh. Because it's like, I want to show as little of myself as possible, but I don't want you guys seeing a bunch of stuff happening in the back corner, which, where, where those bags are, like, there's no activity happening over there. But on the other hand, I don't want to be zoomed in so close to where my hands are that all you see is my hands. And, but then, you know, do I tilt the camera in a certain angle so that, like, the camera's vertical, like a cell phone camera? This is not a cell phone camera, by the way. Like, I don't, I don't like this camera angle. And then there's just simply my posture while I'm sitting in the seat. I mean, it, a little spoiler alert here. It took me a little over, I think the unedited, uncondensed video, where so there's no time lapse, was, was two hours and 15 minutes, I think, so, something along those lines. So, you know, sitting up straight is not really an option, but on the hand, hunched over, 
I knew that my head would get, you know, like right there. If I'm hunched over for too long, A, my back is going to start hurting, and B, I'm still not certain where the camera, uh, camera's field of view is here. So you'll have to forgive me if I've got the build happening like right there. The build is happening off screen, and I, I apologize for that, but I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out eventually. This is something interesting they did with the uh, the cockpit. Ordinarily, with the with the cockpit they have here, uh, with the previous two releases, there was a door on the front. Well, with this version, the the pilot seat actually comes off; it slides out, uh, and and it it preserves the uh, uh, the seat uh, inside. But it allows you to slide the thing in and out, so you don't have to like wedge your fingers in there and 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 break the set. This was really neat the way these panels with the top the top cannon turrets work. They wedge in between a little claw panel and um, a diagonal brick that's underneath, and they just wedge in there. There's no friction on the on the the technique joint that's put in there, and so those those panels will will never move ever. They'll just wiggle slightly up or down, but they don't deform or distort like the larger panels on the back do on the rest of the hull. Eventually, I was really surprised how sturdy those were. Those things ain't going nowhere. Oh, you can see me building the seat here. I think you can see me building it. I decided at this point, you know, the trooper's not going to go on top because I want I want somebody in the cockpit, so I'm just going to put the trooper in there right now and just deal with it later on. And actually, the 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 big cannon turret on top of the on top of the hull uh, actually doesn't have any pegs, so if you try to turn the thing upside down, <laughs> the tro trooper figure will just fall out. I think I was saying something there, and I decided to skip it during this narration. Oh, that was something else. Um, this set, uh, and I, you saw it a moment ago, this set includes a T-shaped handle that runs down the... The ATTE has a waist joint in the, in the Clone Wars TV series and in the movies. In this LEGO set, that waist joint is not recreated, which... Okay, I can understand that. They did that in terms of uh, structural stability, and it would they would have had a heck of a time putting any kind of joint in there because there would have been large, uncomfortable gaps down the middle. Instead of a, jo a waist joint, which, you know, again, it would have been awkward, uh, there's a T-shaped handle that you build that's that slides up and down the middle, so it just sinks down. And it's, it's, it's pulled down by gravity. There's no friction. There's no... Um, there's no gears or anything. That, it just... It just gravity pulls the thing down back into the hull and it just completely disappears. Well, it doesn't completely disappear, but it, it, it becomes streamlined. Look, but the fact that LEGO went through the effort of putting an, uh, a little handle on there is, is, is kind of a nice touch. I suppose they did that just because, well, the thing has six, it, it's a hexapod. It has six legs on it. Where are you going to have room to put your, your, put your hand under there? It'd be awkward to do, especially if you have to, well, I said the posing was difficult with the legs, but you know, having to carry the thing around, you know, where do you put your hand underneath, and when you do eventually set it down, the legs are going to be skewed a little bit, and you'll have to time to fix it, so I like that they put a handle on there. It's ironic, I've, I've had to deal with the base of those ball turrets before, uh, in a number of other sets. They weren't used as turrets, they were usually used as engine mountings, and cowlings and things like that. This is actually the first time I've had to deal with the turret mounting pieces as actual turrets. So it was interesting to see how these things work. Basically there's two hemispheres and they fit together purely with friction and by by whatever reasoning when you put two halves in there uh, lo and behold it'll, it'll turn completely freely. It has plenty of friction and uh, the the ball turrets just they move exactly where you want them to. It's it's really nice. There's one step in the instructions right here. What's the number on this? 34. I just turned the page away. 34. I wish they'd been a little clearer on where the um, exactly where. Like I eventually figured out where the turret goes. The the lower two turrets go. But the instructions. I wish it had a, a close up picture a, a second time of of where the where those turrets really go. It was, it was slightly confusing where that went. The, the picture they gave in step 34 wasn't very clear.
This bag deals ex I, I think this bag deals exclusively with the legs. That's pretty much the same thing. They have you build uh, two of one kind of leg and then they reverse and there's two of the other leg and then they have you build the metal legs. As I was saying earlier with the the two-legged walkers, Lego walkers over over the years and with the AT-AT uh, well, no, I'm sorry, not the AT-AT, but the, the AT-ST, the AT-DP, which is out right now from Star Wars Rebels. Um, none of them have ankle joints. It's all it's a fixed ankle joint, but they do have, you know, hips and knee joint. Um, in this case, uh, there are indeed ankle joints, but they only, the front and back legs, they only swing horizontal, or they only swing one direction. They don't pivot outwards. Like I said, you can't you can't really pose these legs. You, you cannot pose the ATTE here with the legs splayed to the sides or have them curved inwards or have them have the not not even you know at the hips, but have them absolutely turned so that one leg is kind of cantered out to one side and the other leg is is pointed straight ahead. You you can't you don't have those posing options here. But at least it has ankle joints on this version, which are are frictionless uh, ankle joints they have you build I think I said this already they have you build two of each leg and then on the next step they they have it they have you build the opposing sides legs or I'm sorry the opposing corners legs I'm just now seeing it. There's, I don't know why, but the overhead lighting is giving off some sort of a weird red highlight. You can see it in the center of the screen on those two, on that one uh, gray dome there. I don't know why it's giving off red. That's strange. Here I am attaching the one leg. It's a strange way to attach those legs. It's it's a pin arrangement, and I'm just now discovering. Oh wow, those are, those are actually really. Oh, is it going to sit? Can I sit a vertical? Nope, I can't. Oh well. I was hoping it would stand on two legs while I build the other two, but can't do that. I think all the weight on the on the on the head on the cockpit is the reason why it wouldn't balance on just two legs. But the front legs and the back legs are not built quite the same way. That's why they that's why they don't tell you to build all four legs up to this point and then we'll show you the rest of the detail from the other side. The the, the legs two of the legs are are designed separately from each other. And also, by the way, I'd like to point out this is one of the larger uh, LEGO Star Wars kits I've put together. Not that that means anything. Let's see, it would be this, and it's the Republic Cruiser from Episode 1, which, you know, that the big red and white thing that was blown up in the first seconds of Episode 1. Um, I have a V19 torrent, which was, which was a complicated build just because of the all the the gear mechanisms that were necessary to get the legs, or yeah, right, <laughs> to get the uh, the wings on the V19 torrent to connect together. It's an interesting design, but it's it's kind of flimsy. I don't really like how that works. Oh, now I've got all four legs put together. And then uh, you saw me put together the. Uh, was it the Bounty Hunter Assault Cruiser, or Assault Gunship, I'm sorry. I did that a number of weeks ago. That wasn't really big. I, I would call that a medium-sized kit. But, uh, yeah, this ATTE, definitely one of my bigger kits.
from Star Wars, that is. And there's the camel thing with the little tail. Book two, hooray! Again, this, you can see here, this is part of my problem. I've, I want to, there's this big open space in the top left corner, the left side of the screen, or the left side of the, the video screen here, all the action's happening to the right. Well, if I push the camera any further to the right, it'll, it'll show you more of me. And I've also got that bed, that tall bed you can see in the top right corner. I've got that there, and I don't think you guys really want to see that. Mm. What I might do is, now, now that I think about it, what I might do is bring the chair around to the left side of the screen here so that where the camera is right now is where I would be sitting and then put the camera where I'm currently sitting. So it's literally just a flipping of positions. Maybe I should do it that way. I, sh I should experiment with that at some point. The feet, all six feet, are built exactly the same way, but it stops there because at the ankle joint, from the ankle joint up, is where they differ between the front and back legs and the middle legs. And that's the extent of the posing right there. It'll, it'll, uh, there, there's a single, single angled joint at the hip, but there's a double angle, and you can see right there. That's that's the limit of posing right there. You can either pose the leg forward or back, and then you can mess around with the ankle joint. And that's that's the only posability you're going to get out of this kit, and you'll see me mess around with it later on as well. I don't want to put the camera too low because then you would just kind of see my hands but not what I'm building. But if I place it too high above and you start seeing my head leaning over and like like I shouldn't be discussing camera angles with the slits build but you know when you have to kill time for what is it 34 minutes in an audio only narration you kind of have to have some filler in here. I don't want any long gaps you understand. I am also working on a on a a car table, so that that does limit some of the things I could do. If 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 it was up to me, I would actually have the bags uh, out of the camera view entirely, um, and then I'd have the 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 parts of the kit that I've built would be above the instruction booklet and just sitting there. At least at least it would fill up something, and then I would have space for all the the unused parts and the stuff that I'm currently working on. But that's assuming I had a rectangular table to work with, which I don't, and I I don't have room to do to do this anyways. I don't have room for a rectangular table. But you know these these let's builds are these the these are these are early on. So I mean I haven't quite refined my technique yet. Taking my time and building it slowly, talking to myself, or, or <clears throat> I don't talk to myself. <clears throat> But uh, I've kind of got that part down. Here I'm, I'm trying to figure out how these things are attached. Like how are they going to bend over? What's going on? Because I know eventually the, the, the hall panels will eventually turn diagonal. But I was trying to figure out like how are they doing this? There weren't too many uh, surprises in terms of engineering of the kit like how they did this or oh they could have done this differently or eh, there wasn't there wasn't too much of that here i think the the biggest surprise for me was how unusually elaborate the internal structure 
of the middle leg's hip joints were, which is also the same space where that T-shaped handle uh, slides down in. So you had to provide stability for the leg joint, which it, it, it seemed a little overkill and, and over-elaborate for ultimately what appears here. But then again, that's why I don't work for LEGO, I suppose. I'm glad I muted the audio we had. No, oh, you can see me holding onto the handle right there. There was all kinds of air, air traffic overhead uh, when I recorded this, so I'm glad it's on mute. Here it is again, something I complained about in a, a previous Let's Build. Decals where... Excuse me, decals where you didn't really need them. Or decals where they could have... Like like those, uh, the Republic, Republic Army um, logo that they, that they have, the, the circular, you know, um, you know, the eight-sided logo of the Republic, those could easily have been printed on, not decals. It, se it seemed like a waste to do it that way. But fortunately for me, this time I didn't put the decals on the wrong side, so hooray! Again, I wish they'd the the hull panels there that I just finished putting the decals on. I wish that they'd put those decals on before they were attached to the rest of the model, when the the panels were still detached, because I actually found myself having to take them off in order to get a better grip. I wish they'd put those decals on earlier, but for whatever reason they didn't. Another reason I, I was I, re, I was reminded, I reminded myself that I needed to build this thing, and oh yeah, I actually have this kit, and I need to build it, is because spoiler alert, an ATTE appears in early in the second season of Star Wars Rebels. I'm like, oh, that is so cool. Now, now I've got myself wondering, it's like, did I go through all the trouble of getting this one, only to find out that Lego might, I, I don't know, as of this recording, there may or may not be, to find out that Lego might make a fourth version of the ATTE based on its appearance early in Season 2 of Star Wars Rebels. If they do, I'll be honest, I'd rather get that Rebels version than I would this Clone Wars version. I've already got the Phantom, so, you know, that's half the battle right there. That was a good episode, too. Who am I kidding? St All right, I'll say it right here. Star Wars Rebels is a really good show. I... yeah. This fifth bag here deals with the uh, the dorsal hull panels and the turret. Wait, how's that going? The turret ratchets from side to side. It explains to me, how is it that the turret can ratchet from side to side, and yet the legs don't? 
Like the legs don't even have, none of the legs have friction joints in them, and yet this, this one joint, this one turret joint ratchets. Like, I would have been satisfied if it had been a friction joint, but I'm more pissed about the fact that it has any kind of resistance in the joint compared to all the other legs, which have no posability to them at all. The barrel on this thing is ridiculously long. It's like, it's still going, it's still going, it's still going. Oh my god, how many sections does this barrel have? Holy crap! Ugh, push to fire missiles. Ugh. I'm not a fan of these missiles. These are probably the least, least amusing Lego missiles I've had to deal with in quite some time. They're flick to fire. No, they're not. If you flick them, you hurt your fingernails. If you push them out with your fingertip, uh, they don't go anywhere. Let's see, what am I looking at? Oh, it was that panel on the top. The, I'll address it in a moment here. The 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 I'll say the forward dorsal panel that bumps up against the back of the the head, the back of the cockpit. It doesn't rest flush. I'll 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 understand it in a moment later. You know, I'll understand it in a few moments. Oh, but I couldn't couldn't understand why that panel wouldn't go wouldn't go flush with the rest of the the hull. And you see, it's like, yeah, it fits here. Did I, did I assemble it wrong? I double check the box, and no, I, I built it correctly. If I didn't build it correctly, it wouldn't have fit even as well as it did. You notice there was a quick jump in the video there. It's because I, the the power flickered in the house, and I was like, "Oh, I better stop it. <laughs> I better stop it while I've got some sort of footage and save it. Just pick up where I left off." Ugh, these wedge-shaped hull panel decals were a pain in the ass. Couldn't get them fit right. Couldn't get them to. I'm glad I got it right on the first try each, but ugh. That's an, that's another detail that that should have been printed on versus having a decal. Oops, did that wrong. No friction there. Not quite sure why they didn't put friction there. Having learned my lesson with the previous four ball turrets, I decided to attach the uh, the barrels before I stuck them in there. It's just easier to work it this way. There's a lot of friction. In, in, in you know Lego parts friction involved in putting those those barrels attaching them to the turret ball part and just I was nervous every single time I put those on there because you have to push them all the way in and considering how much friction is involved and how how tiny those barrels are just oh man. And that's it. I'll say it again, I regret not getting the previous version of the ATTE only because, well, I only have one clone trooper to work with. I mean, don't get me wrong, having one Jedi would be nice, but I don't really need two. Uh, having two battle droids, you know, two battle droids gets this big thing, just kind of, eh. I, I wish they'd had like a little cannon or something to go with them, so. Eh. But, um, yeah, I mean, there needs to be 
a clone trooper up here, there needs to be a clone pilot in here, and then give me, let's see, one, two, three, four, give me, give me four clone troopers, you know, four clone troopers, a Jedi, two droids, and a um, little cannon for these guys. So, minifigs, not quite the balance I want. I should have gotten the previous version, but as I've already stated, the reason I kind of waited until now, other than the fact that I was just lazy and didn't get the first two versions when I had the opportunity, I'm making excuses for myself, I'm sorry, is, well, I knew that Clone Wars was coming to an end, and like, well, if I'm ever going to get an ATTE, I better get one now. So presumably this is the best of them all. One of the things I really like, it actually comes with a little king handle, which you saw me using uh, uh, quite a bit afterwards. Now, the problem with the way the legs pose, however, is there's no friction in any of these joints whatsoever. None of them have friction. And so you saw me, when you initially set it down, the legs are straight. And then you'll see me kind of rocking it out, so you can get these legs straightened out. And... The other big thing, you didn't necessarily have to have it on the front and the back legs. Actually, no, let me, let me say that again. You didn't necessarily have to have it on the middle legs. But I feel that there was some lost opportunities for posing here when you only have an, a, a hip joint and an ankle joint and that's it. I mean, these things are they're actually surprisingly posable. I mean... You can actually get it to the point where he's shaking his foot off of the dog crap that he's been walking around in. You can do that with this. Well, with these these back ones, all you can really do is just kind of make him sit up. You can make him stand up tall. You can kind of make one splayed or, you know, one side they're standing up straight. And you can have it. That's kind of really the only posing you can do with this. And eh, I don't know. I just, I just, I feel like, let's see, let's see, this leg has to be back, this leg has to be back, let's see, how would I do this, because I don't know how ants walk, it's the only example I can think of, and then these legs, these middle legs obviously support the weight of the thing as it's transferring back and forth, just because it's so heavy it apparently needs an extra set of legs, and that's one of the reasons why I actually take the ATTE more seriously. It's lower to the ground, it's wider, certainly, and it looks like it's got thicker armor. Now, an AT, um, an AT, AT, you know, stands like, you know, way up here, which is actually like out of frame. It stands way up here. This is actually quite small compared, well, it's smaller than, an, than the later AT, AT. Um, but the regular AT, AT, or the, the later AT, AT, I don't take it as seriously as I do this. This thing looks like it's designed to take a punch. These legs, though somewhat stubby, um, it's, it's lower to the ground. It's a much more practical machine. It's more about function over form compared to what the, the later ATAT -AT brought to the table. And it's also a lot more serious. It's got the big gun up here. Although, why it is it didn't have a toy? Ava, don't critique the thing. You're supposed to be critiquing the toy, not the design. Okay, so... You got missile, um, you got a nice ratcheting turret up here, which, wow, that, that actually ratchets quite a bit, but it's good that it ratchets. Friction joint instead, nah, this won't wear out as easily. So, you know, friction, friction, or, uh, ratcheting is actually preferable. And you've got, um, the cannon barrel itself, which can tilt up and down quite generously. I don't know if, I don't know if there's any use to having a point straight down like that, but it's good for fishing, I know that. Um, I wish... And it was, I can understand if these middle legs don't swing in and out. I understand that. But these, the front and back legs definitely needed an extra point of articulation. Like, I don't like the idea that any of the joints have, or that all of the joints have, they're friction free. I don't like that. Um, I do wish, at least in the hips of all of them, there had been some friction would have been nice. Um, these, the, the, the smaller legs, I'll say, because these are the big legs, and all four, the front and back legs are the small legs. I wish the smaller legs had each had an, a, an extra joint of some kind. I just, I feel like there's a lost opportunity here somehow. I'm not, I'm not sure how. Um, but just, 
and and that was kind of the big thing that drove me away from getting the other ATTEs as they came out over the years. There was the first ones that came out in when Episode Two came out. There's the one that came out during the Clone Wars, and then there's this version which came out for, well, technically Clone Wars. The series came out after Revenge of the Fallen. Or, uh, yeah, right. Revenge of the Sith. What am I thinking? Came out after Revenge of the Sith. But uh, this design is pretty much meant to say this is kind of the best version we've got. And and honestly, so, like the I was hoping that eventually the evolution of the legs would be enough. That I mean, the, the legs designs that I'm aware of haven't really changed all that much between the three incarnations of it. Even even the mini versions kind of limited. Anyways, um, the ATTE does have a waist joint, just not on this set. So it, it actually does have a universal joint. It'll turn side to side, and it'll actually flex. Uh, if you look carefully, it does do that. Uh, this version does not. Um, it doesn't need it, though, so I don't miss it. But at least they acknowledge it's here. They've got um, some toothy gear-looking stuff up here, just above this. I kind of wish this handle was a little bigger. And also, when you pick it up, uh, it does have a tendency to lean forward a bit. So, you know, yeah, what can you do? Um, the, I want to say the previous version of the ATTE, um, you actually, this, this was a door that lifted up. This version, however, you just hook your fingers under here, and you carefully pull out, and then there's your pilot seat. And he's basically sitting in front of a giant... Uh, he's sitting in front of a door. Uh, this is different from how they did it previously, and uh, I actually like that, um, because when I built the ghost, uh, the turret that was in the nose uh, did something similar. This came out before the, the ghost, so technically this was first to do it. Uh, I'm sure there are other sets that did it as well. The other thing I noticed is, because of the way the windows are situated, uh, he actually can't hang on to the control, the control sticks in there so he's actually just kind of he's resting his hands on top he's not actually grabbing onto the control stick so that's it happens you know maybe maybe if it if you've been able to sit about one brick higher that might have taken the problem but on the other hand his head's going to bump into the roof if they may put him any higher so they're kind of stuck by situation there um in terms of the various panels that are on here i didn't know that there was a I don't know why it is they gave us a little missile launcher here. I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't expecting this. Did they have this on the box? Uh, did they have that on the box? No, they did not. Okay, so I wouldn't have known about it unless I'd read up about it ahead of time. So this is um, a thing that that I was not aware of when I got it. And they've got separate missile launchers. Um, I suppose it could be like a I, I haven't seen Clone Wars, so maybe it's like a, a, a missile launcher. It's kind of like a pop-up missile launcher or something. Um, or these could be storage. This could be a storage rack, because there's two of these, and then there's two on, on, the, on either side of the turret here. So, like, maybe these are meant to be a replacement for these. Like, you, if you don't like the red missiles, you can use the, the neon yellow missiles, or you can use the neon blue missiles. I mean, maybe that's what they're trying to do here, as opposed to having it be a... Oh, hey, look. An ex oh, look, it's an accessory for the, for, the, uh, for the droid army. Problem solved, Ava. So, yeah, that sits in there. I was a little concerned about how this is supposed to... You know, I'm going to move these figures out of the way. Uh, purple lightsaber. I'm concerned about how the turret panel here, how this pushes down into the place, or pushes down into position. You actually do have to put the turret, you actually do have to put the uh, the cockpit, it does, you do actually have to lean it slightly downwards in this direction in order to get this panel closed all the way. You can actually see it stressing a little bit, well not stressing, but if you look carefully, I'm going to pull down on it, and that's just enough just enough for that to fit in there. So believe it or not, the head is actually tilting oh so slightly forward. Why well, I say the head. Yeah, the, the head, the cockpit is actually tilting slightly forward in order to get this in here, which means there's actually uh, Technic blocks 
and shafts and all kinds of things sitting in there that are actually under stress as we speak. So maybe if you're going to let it sit for a long period of time, you might want to let that sit back up like that. You'll, you'll have this little gap right here, but you're not going to be putting it under stress. And it looks like over time the thing will just naturally reset back up to where it is. So that, that and, and that's really surprising that that would be an issue. I, I, I can't remember the last time that a Lego set would have a conflict like that. I mean, it, it, if really, when I looked at it, when I was putting it together, I was like, oh, okay, that's neat. It's just going to fit in there. But then this comes down on the top, and I was like, well, actually, it doesn't fit. It's really, really strange. I, I, can't, I can't describe how strange it is. It, it, it just simply is. So, yeah, that's an issue. Um, oh, these ankle joints are all over the place. Let's see. These minifigs, I'm just going to stick them in the corner just because this is a big set after all. Um, again, I knew this panel would open up. Looks like this is uh, these two clips in here, which you guys totally can't see. Careful how you pick it up, Ava. Uh, it looks like the clip just above my finger there, and the one just above my finger there, those are obviously meant to hold lightsabers or anything like that. So that's what those are. Um, I'd like to be able to put the clone troopers rifle in here somewhere. I'm not sure where that's going to go. Um, and then you've got a little bomb, or a little bomblet, I'm, I'm sorry, you got a little grade, a grenade um, container right here. So you actually, this, is, this box is actually meant to be removable. So yeah, there's a couple of thermal detonators. You watch uh, episode six when, uh, oh, what was the name? Boosh, you know, Princess Leia in disguise. When Boosh walks in with the with the the round hand grenade, it's essentially the same thing. There's although although it came, I think it came with the the instructions only picture two of them, but the, it actually came with a third one. So all three of them are sitting in there right now. Um. Oh, I just totally noticed that the. Uh, I just totally noticed that when when you fold this up, the turrets actually stay horizontal. Or you can you can have it up like this, but you can also have it up like this. So it has kind of a kind of a mini tower appearance. So you could store it like that, but actually the safer bet at this point would be to store it that way. Call me a Lego geek, but it'd be kind of cool if they could have done some sort of a technique gear arrangement in here so that as it's coming up, it would have stayed horizontal. That would have been kind of cool. But, yeah, and anyways, um, I'll address it back here just because it's, it's hard to describe it in in the other... Um, it's hard to describe it in front without, you know, taking things apart. The mechanic for getting these panels to stay in place, it just... There's this little L-shaped bench right here. It bumps up against it, but what you want to do... And it, 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 says to mo it says in the very last step of the second booklet that you're supposed to take it from this position and push it in. What it doesn't say, and I kind of, kind of wish they had a picture of the the model itself as opposed to, you know, 3D CGI, stuff like that. What you're supposed to do is there's a, there's a gray, let's see, where's my finger? There's just above my finger here is, is a dark gray uh, ramp slanted block. What you're supposed to do, it, you, you now, you can just, oops, let's see, you push it casually and it'll stop up against the L, um, the L-shaped block. What you're supposed to do is lift it up and over and keep going, and then it will snugly fit in place. It, it'll, it'll, it'll pop out if you force it, if you force it either way, but just know that for it to, to have its kind of final appearance where the hull is curved, where the armor is curved, you actually do want to force it up and over. Same goes for that side, and the same goes for the two in the front. So there's that. Oh, um, I'm not certain what, if, if, is this ramp supposed to be left down? Is it supposed to be left like that? I'm under the impression it gets stored back here like this, and then if the troops want to get in and out, they go that way. I don't even know where the, where the access doors are on the ATT. I just now that I think about it, I never, I never looked. 
So, mm, yeah. Um, speaking of panels and the way they fit together, um, wow, this is a really long conclusion I've got going here. Uh, I really like the way these front panels here, these front, uh, come on, David, you're almost done. These front diagonal panels here, I like the way those are really snug. They're not going anywhere. They will not go up or down. There's a friction pin back on the inside here, and then there's a little, a little claw uh, piece that wedges in so that the, the panel actually gets wedged in between two different points here, kind of like this. It gets wedged in place. So it will neither go up nor down. It won't go out, or it won't go in and out. It won't go up and down. So even though it's pinned in in one place, it is surprisingly secure. So that's good. Um, anything else other than my mistake of not getting an earlier version of the ATTE so that I could have more clone troopers to play with? I, I suppose I could go to LEGO and see if maybe they're still selling, like, individual clone troopers, and maybe I should, um, maybe I should try getting more of them that way. I don't know. But, um, I'm not, yeah, so... My mis or I can't really say my mistake. It's my mistake for not getting an earlier version, but on the other hand, this is probably the final version of it. I wish I had more clone troopers to play around with, like two two droids and two Jedi OP. You know, considering these guys can take out entire squads all by themselves without any assistance whatsoever, even against super battle droids, by the way. I've only got one clone trooper, and really he's just a pilot. You know, I should have had one there, one there, and maybe two more floating around. So minimum four troopers one Jedi. Um, I've never seen this guy before. Isn't this the guy that Jango Fett killed in Episode 2? Like, spoiler alert, I don't know who this dinosaur guy is, but like... By the way, something else I noticed. I can't remember if I put it in the commentary or not. This particular Jedi, whatever his name is, the, the back of his torso is painted. For whatever reason, Mace Windu, his, the back of his uh, tunic is not painted on. Kind of strange. Not sure why. Um, yeah, needed more troopers. Needed more leg articulation. Maybe give the uh, maybe give the droids a little little turret thingy or something to play around with. Um, this I'm surprised this is as tight as it is. So that's four. Um, those are kind of the small things. Those are those are the those are the complaints. I like having a little handle though. Like, kind of wish it would lift a little higher than it does because it's just, your your fingers are just right there on that turret so but that that's that's small beans that, that's a small sh i do like though this and this is not the first lego set to have this i do like that lego is going out of their way for these larger sets they're kind of broad or whatever it is maybe, maybe not on star destroyer sets they actually are incorporating little little handles on here so that's it's really nice that they're doing that I, I'm, I'm glad they're taking the time to, to stick a little something in there it's like, yeah, we know you're going to have a hard time hanging on to this front any, so we're, we're going to give you a little handle, you know, just pick up and go kind of mentality. Whoa, speaking of go, okay. I still wish I'd gotten that, um, oh, what was the name of that one? What, whatever their, um, their, their flying troop transports are, I wish I'd gotten the version that would come down, uh, it, it, it would be in scale with this word, come down latch on and then you know pick the thing up i still i still wish i'd gotten one of those but i wasn't willing to willing to pay three four hundred dollars for it so yeah just gonna have to do without maybe someday in the future they'll uh they'll release that that one vehicle as a special version hopefully it's backward compatible too okay that's that's it and so this is av unit 4a saying thanks for tuning in